It's also possible that this is wrong. <laughs> was that all it was? Literally changing a one to a zero, like a programmer. So much for that. We could do a quick test. Video equals world coordinates x, y, z. Okay. Well, that was not right. Well, let's go back to this. Now that's fixed. It shouldn't be this difficult. I don't know why I'm getting this behavior. Oh, oh, I think I know why. I think I know why. Because I am not clamping this between zero and one, so I was negating some of the values when I got higher. Ah, well, that took a long time to figure out. <laughs> We're gonna march between the world coordinate and the intersection point. Ooh, trippy. Oh, that's wild. That's not the result that I expected at all. I expected it to just completely break. But like you can see the plane projected there. Now I'm curious what happens when I bring back that uh, vertical limit again. Uh, let's find out. It looked really bizarre last time I tried it. I think it didn't work at all with one step. I had to set it to two. <laughs> that is funky. It's the step that's right up here. That's probably why it didn't work before. Is the first step was over by the camera. The two. All right, I'll do 500. Just for you. Oh, God. Ugh. Yeah. All right. That. Yeah. Get oh, that frame right. Oh. But it's so smooth. The clouds are so soft and fluffy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I can't even platform at this frame rate. I've kind of got stylized clouds going on. Now we've got, like, floating mountains going on here. Oh, this looks like some crazy, like, geometric cave architecture or something. What a bizarre thing we've created. On the plus side, it makes it look like there's more detail back there than there really is. This looks like the Aurora Borealis or something, doesn't it? <laughs> the Northern Lights doesn't quite look like foggy clouds. Kind of does, but not quite. I need to save this effect for a game where you can actually, like, fly around. In the Nebula of Terror. That used to look like shredded cheese, but now it's all like one mass. Like I can't even tell where the dough starts and the cheese. <laughs> I posted a picture of this or something on Twitter and DiGiorno, their actual Twitter account replied with a sad face. It was quite hilarious. That's not terrible. I would have liked to have a little more texture to it. But I'm afraid if I tweak anything else, it's gonna all come crumbling down. It's not really an engine limitation thing. I mean, this is just a shader that I wrote from scratch. It's just very expensive to do anything volumetric. And I'm sure there's ways I could optimize it, but uh, I don't have a lot of shader experience. So I don't know the deep, dark secrets and sacrifices necessary to get good performance. But hey, it looks neat. Sounds like a problem for future dispo. <laughs> yeah, most of my problems are future dispo. <laughs> Future Jit was in a lot of trouble. Oh boy, I'd hate to be him. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Shame it kills the frame rate. 38 FPS. Ouch. But I did finally get some cool looking clouds. I didn't, was starting to think that would never happen. But yeah, wouldn't that be wild? You unlock the invisibility ability and they're just like, yeah, the guards or whatever don't see you. But you don't see you either. <laughs> Gah, nail it. Even as an invisible character, I still knew where my fist was. Let's see if I can get this other one. Oh no, I missed it. I was so close. Whoa, whoa. Holy mokes. Mokes, holy smokes. I've summoned a vast army of fist-wielding girls. That hurt the frame rate even more than the smoke. That <laughs> did not go well at all. Uh, aha. And then I can set visible to false. Boom, there we go. I spawn in and we hide the spawner and everything is hunky-dory. 
Oh. 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 Oh boy. Oh, look. There's so many of me. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, no. Not everything's hunky dory. I have made a mistake. <laughs> now it just looks like I'm one character with two pieces of hair. I've got pigtails now. <laughs> but I can't double jump with one of them for some reason. There we go. We're making it together. Double fist Oh no. <laughs> I didn't time my punch right. Double fist punch. There we go. Curious where the seam of that is. Seems like I lined it up pretty well. Hi, my good old tablet friend. Hello, tablet, my old friend. I've come to draw on you again. Control D to duplicate that. And we're gonna trigger name this and be like, fancy. And we're gonna set our target to be fancy. And it should open just the second one. Boom. And then we can add another trigger. Control D, put this over here. Put that back as door. And when we punch this one, it opens the back one. And then we punch that one and it opens the first one. Look at that! Let's see what this do. I think. Bloop. That is an interesting thing. Ooh. Well, that's extra interesting. It resets one of my characters when I die, but the other one just keeps landing on the laser. RZ. 180? Yeah. That didn't quite work. <laughs> That's, no. That is not what I wanted. What is it doing? I don't understand. What happens if I just rotate that? RZ90. Okay, that works. Seems like it works independently. Do I have to rotate every single thing independently? Maybe if I select just the root, just the IK targets. Okay, that seems like that worked. I guess when I selected everything, it was rotating some other controllers and it had adverse effects. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, that's not how I wanted that to rotate. Everyone comments on my tabs. This is a small subset of the number of tabs I have open. I've got three browser windows full of, well, I guess four browser windows, five browser windows, each of which with lots of tabs. This is just tabs specific to Godot. I need to go in object mode and I select this and I bind this and then I go over to this guy and I go to edit mode and I scale this. Well, it makes the bottom bigger. You see that modifier that merged these caused the edges to not quite do what I wanted. The fun thing too, if I really wanted to, I could like bend it if I wanted to do like beat up old stuff. I can use this cage mesh to do all kinds of cool stuff. Yep. When you gotta do stuff on a budget, and you gotta do stuff on, well, both a time and money budget. Whoa! <laughs> oh boy, speaking of budget, I hope my budget can afford a new chair, because this thing just up and snap a -rooneyed. I always knew this chair would snap one day. It's just a matter of time. I don't think that actually duplicated it. No, it didn't. Shift D. I don't know if I'm pressing the wrong key or what. Something Shift D is going on, that's for sure. Oh boy. <laughs> the armrest broke too. The front part there was connected. It was the back part that broke. And then I pushed down on the armrest and the whole thing just... <laughs> I can't help it. He's there looking at me. <laughs> Q to the power of C to the power of P. Behold the power of P. You're in for a surprise. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Who was it that brought it up that my avatar was black and white and it looked like I was offline? So last night I went in and colorified my Pixel Daily's yearbook picture. I need to update my Twitch avatar with that so people can tell the difference between online and offline. Let's give this guy a raid and show him some game dev love. <laughs> tree tree. <laughs> That's so funny you would come in here right at this moment. Just a couple minutes ago was showing that I made a colored avatar. <laughs> Tree 
Do I need to bring out my tin whistle and play taps from my chair? Rest in peace, chair.